Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us today for our PTAC Lunch and Learn. Uh, as you probably know by now, we are offering these Lunch and Learn opportunities uh, throughout the summer, um, just about every other Wednesday, uh, talking about just various uh, topics related to government contracting. Uh, today, we're really excited to be presenting um, Finding Opportunities on Public Purchase. Uh, our presenter is Andy Lewis, who is our PTAC program manager uh, here with your Wyoming PTAC. Uh, her main office is based out of Cheyenne, um, but just like me, we serve the whole state. Um, always happy to uh, contact anybody in Wyoming who's interested in learning about government contracting. Um, these Lunch and Learns, before I turn it over to Andy, just want to, in case this is your first one, we really encourage audience participation. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your questions, um, your thoughts. If you've had um, special success out on public purchase, um, maybe using a, a technique or an idea that Andy doesn't touch on today, uh, please feel free to unmute, uh, to use the chat to offer any suggestions you have. If you want to turn your camera on, you're more than welcome. Although, uh, if you are actually lunching while you learn, um, maybe, you know, you don't want to be eating on camera. That's totally fine. Um, but again, feel free to pop into the chat, which should be located somewhere near the bottom of your screen, or simply unmute yourself uh, if you have a question, a concern, or a comment as we move forward. Anything I'm missing? Any questions before Andy gets going about public purchase? Great. Well, we're excited to have you all here today. And Andy, um, I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that you can share yours. Okay. We'll go ahead. And well, good afternoon, everyone. So yes, uh, if you do have questions, please just feel free to pop up and say it's usually a good idea to hit the questions while we're running through things. Um, I hope everyone can see by now that there's not too much of a video delay. This is the main screen to public purchase. Uh, public purchase is a company, it's a third party vendor that um, makes a living um, pushing out federal, state, and local buys to, to, to people. And by having the states and cities and towns and counties and conservation districts, et cetera, use their website. So um, it is the website that the state of Wyoming, that YDOT within the state, um, some of the conservation districts, Teton County, Laramie County Community College uses it, UW uses it for certain things. So it's a good idea to create a registration on this website and you will, you, you can go ahead and pay for a registration here and they will try to upsell you three times and they do it right in the beginning with the start registration over here where the key is. Um, they, they want you to buy the best deal on the left, but um, we encourage folks just to do the free registration. They'll try to upsell you three times, but just keep saying no. You can always change your mind later. It is $400 a year. And uh, I've never actually used their, their four fee one, so I can't really comment on it. Um, but when you get started, you'll just go ahead and click go to register. And I'm not going to do that right now because the process is you go ahead and you fill out some data, you pick some codes, you pick some states, and then they have to approve you. So I couldn't do this initially. Um, to show, but let's assume I've done it and now I'm logged in. And so we're going to go through the many steps that uh, you can take to do that. Up here on the right are the basic navigation, home search, browse, my stuff, and tools. The two most used are the home and the tools. Uh, over on the left is the logout button, their help. It's a little minimal, but it's there. And if I were registered with, let's say, the state of Wyoming and I had logged in and I had put in all my codes already, any bids that I would have been invited to would have been listed here under bids invited to. And any bids I had respond to would be listing under bids responding to. Um, so to get started, I'll show you some of the sign up sheets. Basically, when you go to tools, Across the top here in this breadcrumb trail, right up here in the upper right, 
Um, the first thing is you, you list your company. Uh, you can see there are a lot of optionals. And um, so you'll have to fill out minimal information. You don't have to put your EIN, your DUNS. They do like you to put the ones that I have filled out here. Um, they, and they also need to know the time zone. And if they have any questions when you do your registration, they'll send you an email and ask a couple questions and then they'll activate you and then you can sign in. So you fill out this screen, you'll fill out a classification screen and their classifications just think codes. And initially when you register, they will ask you for, over here on the left is a, a list of all the codes. They will ask you for NAICS codes. And I've filled in a few NAICS when I registered um, with, this, with this particular registration I got here. And then they'll ask you to pick which states, and that's under the regions up here. So I'm clicking on regions. And they've got states, they've got territories, and they have areas in Canada that they cover. So they cover the whole US. That doesn't mean, however, every state or every county or every university across the United States uses public purchase. It just means that you can go ahead and select different states, but it doesn't mean that every state uses it. For instance, the state of Colorado does not use public purchase to put out bids, um, but Wyoming does. So you'll pick which states you want. You'll pick, I, pick, I clicked on notifications. Then you'll go ahead and you'll select where, how you want to be notified. And I generally suggest to everyone that they click all the government agency types down here. There's a select all and the notification messages. I have them clicked all, but I don't have them. I have them uncheck the bottom one that says public purchase finds bids that may be of interest to me and invites me to sign up for bid syndication. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and, and do it. You may, like I said, I haven't tried it, so I don't know how, how useful it is. So you'll pick how you want to be notified. And that's basically the sign-in process is those three things. A little bit about your company. You'll initially pick out NAICS codes, the regions, and how you want to be notified. So over here on the right, when I do click on tools, I'm going to go back to home and now I want to go ahead and look at what Wyoming has. So over here on the right, I'm going to select the region and I'm just going to, they're in alphabetical order. I'll go down and then pick out Wyoming. And then after you pick a state or a, a region, they'll go ahead and have various entities listed. I think sometimes they list a lot of these entities just to think, just to show that they do more. But um, if you start clicking on a few of these, you will find that there's no leads listed. Um, so we're going to go to the one we know has a lead listed, and that's the state of Wyoming. And I'm going to click on that. And this is the basic. So this is everything the state of Wyoming currently has out. Um, they are in order of essentially time left to respond with the shortest time left up on top. Um, and then as you see, as you go down here, it gets longer and longer to respond. So um, they have this, when it was put up initially, when it's due, how long you have left to respond, and whether or not they've put out any addendums to it. Uh, addendums are similar to the federal amendments and that means changes to what they initially put out. So this list, it's in no particular other order besides the timing. And you can see it's rather long for the state. And let's go ahead and let's look at YDOT. So I'm going to leave it as the state of Wyoming and I'm going to drop down to YDOT and these are in alphabetical order. So YDOT happens to be at the bottom. And you'll see, Janine, am I going too fast or the screen's shifting okay and people can follow along? Uh, for me, they're, 
it's it's pretty seamless. Um, if anyone else is having issues or yeah. needs to slow down, please um, let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for um, me, it looks great. Okay, so uh, for YDOT right now, they currently only have two leads listed. Um, they've recently put up this guide for vendors to submit proposals explaining things. Um, with either one of these, you're going to want to register if you feel that you could respond to any of their solicitations. Um, and you'll go up here on the left underneath the name and you can click register with this agency. And when I click that, it has a three step, basic three-step process. Uh, it's pretty easy. You just go ahead and click the continue button over here on the right. And then it takes you to the particular code that the agency you've clicked uses. And YDOT uses National Institute of Government Purchasing Codes. So these are not NAICS codes. They're not SICK codes, which Dun & Bradstreet uses. They're five-digit codes that are actually fairly accurate. So you are going to want to pick a swath of codes that would cover what you do. Um, so let's say there's two, there's two ways to search. You can do the browse or you can do a keyword search. I actually like to do the browse and get used to all these categories because sometimes you'll see things in the browse that a keyword search will not pick up. And if you can figure out which category your codes are under, um, for instance, let's say you wanted to do, uh, you're an electrician. You'd come down here to the bottom where it says the trades, electrical, engineering, HVAC, plumbing, and welding, and you'd click on it. And that opens up a small sub menu and then like let's say I'm an electrician then I'm going to click on electrical equipment and supplies and then that opens up a much bigger menu and it has essentially the list in numerical order and over on the right there's add buttons so this is for now electrical equipment and supplies. It's not for a service, so please note that. But if you were an electrician and you sold lighting fixtures, for instance, which is down here, you would want to go ahead and click the little add button. And when you do, the little add turns into a trash can, and that's how you would delete that if you found you didn't want to hold on to that. So. There's a lot of things here, but this is mostly um, all fixtures and stuff, so it's not services. You can open and close. These things are toggles. One click opens, one click closes. So I click that one, and I'm going to click the trades again. Uh, if I wanted to do a search and try to find everything to do with electricians, I click the search. And then I type in, um, we'll go ahead and we'll type in, let's type in electrician because that should bring up the service and not the commodity itself. So I'll type the electrician and I'm going to click the search button. It brings them up in alphabetical order from the browse list you saw. And you have to read kind of carefully to make sure you're picking the right subject area. Um, so, for instance, under hardware, you, you'd still be picking a commodity of aprons and tool pouches. But if you're more interested in um, plumbing, uh, well, that still brings up wire. That, that's not working out too well, is it? Ah. So, um, let's try. Electrician didn't work right. Let's try electrical. And you'll notice that brings up quite a few more things. It has a six pages at least down here on the bottom. You don't ever want to click the continue button until you're done pulling your codes. So you'd go looking through here and try to find the best codes that fit. And I'm still looking for, if I was an electrician, I'm still looking for services. So I'm going to keep clicking the next button until I begin to see services. And I'm going to, uh, 
run through this a little quickly, which I apologize for, but I want to get to other things too. So we've got maintenance and repair of equipment. And so if I were an electrician, I would add 93625 and I'll click the little add button. And I'll also click the maintenance and repair of equipment for uh, 40. If I did high voltage things, I would want to add that. And you'll notice that the codes you pick come up in a list above. And as you select them, they come up above. Um, my advice to you on picking codes is, is try to be pretty broad. You're never sure how a contracting officer is going to code something. So try to be a little broad. It doesn't hurt to have a wide swath of codes. And you'll notice now I'm up to eight pages as I keep clicking through on next. Um, like I would go ahead. Now here under miscellaneous commodities and services, they've got standing and texting for hot spots and manufacturing. So you have to kind of go through things either using the search or the browse and figure out where to add things. I'm going to under public works here in the middle right here wiring and other electrical maintenance and repair services well that hits an electrician right on top of the head so we're going to add that one so once you've added as many codes as you feel appropriate then you can go ahead and click continue and then as third cycles the next thing to do is click register and that's it now it says up in the top left hand corner that you are registered with this agency and that's all the process is for both Wyoming State and YDOT. You go ahead and just click register with them. You pick the appropriate codes and you click the register button again. So I've registered with YDOT. Now I'm over here on the right. I'm going to go ahead and select the state of Wyoming. Remember they're in alphabetical order again. And then I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to click on the left under open bids for state of Wyoming up here in the left corner. I'm going to click register with this agency. And then I click continue again. And what is going to happen since the state of Wyoming uses the same codes that YDOT uses, my current list is going to come up. So I can add to this. Maybe there's something under public works and park equipment. I might want to add, um, maybe as an electrician, I sell power generation equipment. And then I go down here and just, I would just click add on it. And then I'd click continue when I'm done looking. And then I click register again. So now I'm registered with the state and with YDOT so I can answer their bids that they're putting out. So let's go ahead, for instance, and take a look at one of these. Um, let's just take here this high set wraparound one. I don't know what a high set is, I'm afraid, and I don't know what a wraparound is either. But over here on the right are questions that have been asked. And they want you to ask all questions online. They don't really want you to email the contracting officers. So um, you can click view ask questions and you'll see that the, somebody has asked questions about the RFP and they've asked a question about bonuses and stipends, et cetera. And they've put up answers here. So that's how you look and ask questions. And uh, if you wanted to respond to the bid, there's two places to do it. You can click respond over here on the right hand corner, or you can click the respond down here. In the center of the bid, they'll have the dates, what department it is, they'll have what kind of bid it is. So this is a request for proposal, not just a quote, it's a proposal. Down here, they give you the closing date for questions, which was, and this one was uh, May 29th. So they gave you a couple weeks to ask questions because this came out May 13th. Um, then their proposals are due at 2 o'clock Mountain Time. That's not unusual. That's very 
normal for uh, Wyoming. Uh, they're due on the 12th. The documents for any of the projects will be listed below. This one only has the one document and you would click, you can click either right on the, this is a Word document, you can click over here or you can click on the right under download to load it up. While you're in public purchase, the back button works pretty well and it'll go backward through all the screens you just did. So I'm backing up to where I'm back to the list for the state of Wyoming. Um, so let's say I'm all of a sudden, I'm not getting a whole lot of leads and I want, I thought, well, maybe I haven't picked enough codes. If you want to go ahead and add more NIGP codes, you'll go up here on the top right hand corner and click on tools and you'll go back to the classifications. That's their codes. And it brings up this screen with the menu of the codes and the types over here on the left. So it almost always will default to the first one on the list, which is the SIC codes. But you'll want to go down to NIGP because remember, that's the code that the state of Wyoming, YDOT, the university, LCCC, they all seem to use the same code. So you're going to click on NIGP. And within your user account, it'll bring up the list you've selected. So if you wanted to get rid of them for any reason, you'll just click the garbage can over here on the right. But if you want to add more, you'll either do the browse or you'll do the search and you add them. Okay. If you wanted to change your regions, that's your states, you'll just go and uncheck. Oh, let's see. Does anybody have any questions yet on any of this? Uh, I don't want to, if somebody has a question, they want to look for a certain code. I've clicked home and I'm going to go back to the region and I'm going to pick Wyoming again. And then I'm going to pick the state of Wyoming and we'll go look at another couple of bids. Um, I've gone through this list of agencies and the only agencies that I have seen that use public purchase are uh, Medicine Bow Conservation District, Teton County Conservation District, and um, LCCC, UW, the state, YDOT, and Teton County. And the way I've kind of determined that is you can click on any of these. So let's click on Sweetwater County School District number one. If you pick on one of the agencies and it comes up to there are no open bids at this time, that's a hint that maybe they don't actually use public purchase to put out their work. You'll see if we go ahead and we select Teton County, Wyoming, that it pops up with a lead for a data center. Um, so if you don't have anything listed, your best bet is going to be to go online, go to Google, go to the agency you want to find the work in and see how they put out the work because it might not be that they use Teton County, whether or not they're on this list. Um, Andy, we do have a question. Sure. Um, let's see if I can um, frame this. So when approaching public purchase as a new user, is it better to first identify the agency you're hoping to work with and then see what kind of codes they use? Or is it better to just add a bunch of codes right off, NAICS, NIGP? Um, how, what, would you, what would you say is the best approach there? I would see if they have a registration. Um, for instance, if, uh, well, I'm gonna stay at Wyoming. Oops, whoops, whoops, there is no stay. <laughs> Let's go to LCCC, Laramie County Community College. Um, you'll notice that they have a bid out here for snow and ice removal, but there is no registration. Um, you, so you could, I guess, um, if you're in a certain area and you're interested in working with a school district, I would actually go to the school district and see how they put out the work. You can come to public purchase. What I have seen on all the Wyoming um, 
folks that use this is they all use NITP codes. So I don't have anyone, when I'm helping them, I don't have them put in a lot of NAICS codes and I don't have them put in any other codes at all. We just stick with NIGP codes. Um, and I would do a very wide swath so you could be sure to get um, what comes up. So two ways, go ahead and just find the agency and see how they may, what they may use. Like the city of Cheyenne is a perfect example. It's listed here. And when I click on city of Cheyenne, it has nothing there. But the plain fact of the matter is that they put out their own things on their own website. So you have to figure out what either third party, like public purchase, an agency is using, or do they have their own website? I'd be willing to bet, I'm not positive that a lot of school districts have their own website. They may use a third party, but um, if they have a good web person on board, they can just put out leads right on their website. So, but uh, as far as public purchase, almost all the state entities that I know of use NIGP codes. Um, it doesn't relate to going, putting in a lot of NAICS. There's no cross-referencing. So make sure you pick a really good swath of NIGP codes. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and we'll just, if there are any other questions, please, please pop in, Janine. Um, I'm going to go back to the state of Wyoming. Let's look at a couple more of these. Um, let me see. Here's one on Wind Creek Erosion Project. Um, this one came out May 22nd. It's due today at uh, 2 o'clock. Um, this one, if there is a bid bond required, they do put it in red ink usually here. And that is just based on the state's requirements. There are questions that have been asked. Here they've got the plan holders list, the contractors list. And you can view these lists, like if I wanted to view the contractors that have put in or that have looked at this, you can see who's looked at them. And then you can use, if, if you want to be added, you can. Um, you can use the back button to go backward. I have seen a lot of construction projects require pre-bid meetings. So my advice would be the minute you have a lead come in to you via email, which when you pick your codes, the leads will come to you via email and you can click on it and then you'll have to log in to public purchase if you're not already logged in to view it. And I would ju jump on the ones and keep an eye on them because bid bonds take a little while to get if you don't have one and pre-bid meetings, you, you can't miss them. The state has a lot, especially on a construction site. Um, usually, some of them are down here under notes. Here's a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting that was held on February 28th. But what I have seen are a lot of mandatory pre-bid meetings, especially for construction. They want you to see the project. They want to meet you. Down here on the bottom of their documents, they've got the bid response form. They have an addendum that came out which you have to accept. This is just like accepting amendments to solicitations for the feds. You need to show that you've seen it. And it has the document and your bid bond form. So when you set up enough codes and you get your emails, you do want to respond and keep an eye on these things so you don't miss any pre-bid meetings. So I don't know if I've hit everything. Um, Janine and I are both very happy to run through getting you set up. Um, you can do your initial count creation and get that done and then we can set up a Zoom with you and run through registering or uh, finding work and, and changing these things and tweaking things. So it's right at 1230. Janine, do you have anything to add if we don't have any other questions? Um, I think that you did a fantastic job and I learned as well. <laughs> um, there's always something new to learn about, um, utilizing these platforms, I think. 
Um, the only thing I might just add very briefly, and I can turn on my camera here so you guys can see me. Hello. Um, the only thing I might add is um, this can be a really useful tool also. I think what uh, Andy mentioned in terms of looking at those pre-bid meetings, um, looking at addendums, looking at um, you know the contact information, it's just a great way to start building up your own personal knowledge of who's who um, in this world, especially if you're new to it. Um, attending a pre-bid meeting just to network, if you think you might be a potential subcontractor on a job, like say it's for a construction job, um, that's a pretty cool strategy. Um, we know some folks that do that. Um, so, so really thinking about public purchase as yes, a way to um, find solicitations that you want to bid on, but also just to get a feel for the community that exists out there in the world of contracting, um, who's who at different agencies, whose contact information are on which uh, solicitations. Um, it's a great research tool. Yeah, very good. That's a great point. Thanks for mentioning it because it's totally based on it. Um, this is my email. And I have a couple actual public purchase accounts, um, not that I do it, but these are all the invitations I have gotten via the codes I have put in. And so you do want, I mean, I, I have, I get too many of these, I'll admit, but yeah, we'll when see you the public purchase screen right now. Oh, okay. Let's see. We we'll might need to stop little. sharing and then reshare. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go there. Sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Wait till it pops up. Let me know. It's there. We got you. Okay, so um, you'll get an email from public purchase. It'll give you the title. And uh, let's say we want to go ahead and look at this um, Forest Creek Health Management Project once. So I'll open the email. Now, since I'm already logged in to public purchase, it went right to the bid. And I'm going to click on down here on the HTTP link, and it jumps right to it. So you can stay logged in to public purchase all day. They don't kick you out. Um, this is one of the ones that did have a, a required pre-bid meeting um, and their little table and their list of documents. So um, the codes are really important for getting the emails. So do pick a really wide swath of codes and that's where Janine and I can help because we've been through the codes and traversed them multiple times and usually know where most of them are. Uh, but we're also pretty good guessers. <laughs> so um, that's all I have. If there's no other questions. Great. Well, I will go ahead and pop up our contact information for you all so that you have that. Uh, we do have some additional lunch and learns coming up uh, very soon. Let's see here. There we go. There's our contact information. Um, this presentation today and all of our Lunch and Learns are a partnership with the SBA here in Wyoming. Um, Deb Ferris often attends our Lunch and Learns. Uh, she actually did our presentation last time on the 8A. Oh, I can go back one second. Um, but as Andy said, uh, she and I are both always willing to meet and go over things with you together. Um, happy to do one-on-ones on public purchase or anything else government contracting. Here's what we have coming up uh, June 24th. Uh, our good friend Eric, who I believe is on the call today. Hi, Eric. I am. <laughs> is going to be here to talk about GSA schedules. Uh, do you want to give us a teaser trailer? Uh, <laughs> so you put me on the scene. Um, no, it'd be quick just to kind of, you know, let everybody know why we utilize the schedule, what the schedule is for, and, um, you know, see if it fits best into your business practice. Um, but it is a very uh, useful avenue for procuring for the federal government. So it's a good place to um, look for opportunities as you want to grow your business. That's excellent. Thank you so much. I can't wait. I think that's going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then July 22nd, we have a representative from the National Park Service who will be here to talk about reading and responding to solicitations. Um, so both of these are a must attend, um, in my humble opinion. 
Yeah, uh, you can always watch the Wyoming SBDC.org training page for any additional uh, events that we have coming up. Um, right now, tentatively, we are discussing uh, July 1st. So that's coming up fairly quickly. A bonus lunch and learn that day to talk about woman-owned small businesses. Um, so if you think that you might be a woman-owned small business or you're interested in learning more about what that is, um, what all of that is about, uh, maybe pencil in July 1st at noon. And we will be sure to post uh, updates on that as we get that all scheduled. Um, anything else, Andy, before we let folks go on about their beautiful mm, June day? No, I let them go ahead and get outside and go sit on a park bench if there is one where it's not windy. All right, you heard her, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you as always. Um, wonderful to see your names pop up on our on our screens today. Uh, we love connecting with you, um, thinking about you all the time, hoping things are going well, uh, and let us know how we can support you. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Thanks. Member. Thanks, Jane. Yeah.